Hi there and welcome to the lab. I'm USBC Director of Coaching Stephen Padilla. I want to take a second and talk a little bit about some physical game with you today and we're going to move past the beginning of where you set up. We're going to go into the start. Now that's going to be where we're going to see the bowling ball and the feet start to move at the same time. Uh, I want to be specific about this section and we're going to isolate this piece, talk specifically about what we see most often here and some ideas of what you can do to help really make your game uh, a little easier to repeat and make it easier to flow from start to finish just by getting your start uh, the same way time after time. So first let's talk about what the actual start is, which is actually the movement of the bowling ball and the feet at the same time. Most often you'll have one of those, one of the two of those start first. Most often it's the footwork and for example a five step approach, you'll see the, the opposite foot or the, usually the left foot on a right handed player move first and then from there you'll see the ball start to move as the ball side foot moves as well. So you'll see for a right handed player, and I'll just talk right handed for just a second, you see the ball move and the right foot move together, that would be the start or the beginning of timing in the approach, but we want to ideally get those two moving at the same time, whether or not you move the left foot first in a five step approach or not. It doesn't really matter how many steps you take either, whether you're taking five or six or ten. Um, somewhere along the line you typically get the ball side foot and the, the bowling ball started at the same time, and that's the four steps of what we typically refer to as the four step approach. But just in the start, we want to make sure that we get the bowling ball and the foot moving approximately the same time. Uh, most often, if we don't see them at the same time, we'll see one start in front of the other, which will lead us into a finish position that usually has an early or a late timing to it. But for the most part, we get both of those starting at the same time in the same direction, then ideally we, we tend to get uh, better consistency and better motion overall, easier to repeat just as a whole. Now the initial ball movement, we want to consider how far that should move out in front of us. A lot of players will try to push it excessively out in front if they're just beginning. Sometimes they'll drop it straight down toward their footwork. Most of all, we want to see the shape of that, that direction rounded to start. So instead of having corners to it being too far out and then too straight down, we want to see some shape or some round movement because a circular motion tends to keep momentum moving and it doesn't stop momentum and or needs some kind of muscle to change its direction. So for the most part, initial ball movement and distance going forward are going to be slightly out in front of the foot for the ball's position and a rounded shape into the downswing. Now, with the foot start, we want to consider that the foot start needs to be um, tempo-wise about as fast as the ball's moving out when we talk about the ball side. So for example, the right-handed bowler and then the footwork are both going to move at the same time. The distance they're going to move is approximately the same as well. So the ball's going to be slightly out in front of the footwork, but the foot's going to move with it. And once it gets into compression, the ball's going to be into that rounded shape or into the downswing. So that initial distance and, and shape are going to have the tempo of how fast you're going to accelerate through the shot really built into its first movement. The footwork though doesn't necessarily have to go exactly the same direction as the arm swing in the start. And that's unique. This is one of the only steps we typically see that may have a different direction of footwork and a different direction of the arm swing. Now the foot start, sometimes we call it almost a, a, a tight rope or an initial movement of the ball side foot directly in front of the opposite foot. And having those two pieces together tends to move the, the ball side or the, the hip out of the way of the swing shape coming through. And that's a key factor in acceleration, in accuracy, repeatability in today's game, is to really clear out a spot and take the body really around the ball more than you would take the ball around the body. The old school version of how players used to play would typically take the ball swing around the body, um, try to keep the footwork in the same exact spot, maybe start and finish in the same exact spot. But for the most part, um, that would change the shape of the, of the ball path and then you would wind up with some inaccuracies if you change the shape of where the ball was going. In today's game, we move our body around the ball with that slight tightrope move or that, that ball side foot getting out of the way, and now we swing in a straight line, and then once we get to the finished position, we typically get our body back in line, or our slide foot catches back up next to the swing shape coming through, and we just balance out the rest of that momentum. Overall though, when we talk about the foot start, the tempo of that and how fast it's going to move, fast or slow, will be dependent on how quickly you move that step. So a shorter step, a faster step, is typically going to have faster tempo to it. Uh, a longer step, perhaps with the heel and the toe, as opposed to just being on the toe, will have slower tempo to it. So you'll want to kind of be aware as to whether or not you've got faster or slower tempos, and then the size of that first step will make a difference in dictating the rest of the tempo of the approach. Overall, as a whole, when it comes to the start, you really want to take and initiate the entire start primarily with the lower body. You want to keep the lower body a little bit more in control of when things are going to start and try not to let the upper body lead the tempo of the swing, if anything. It's easier to take the large muscle groups of the lower body and get them starting, get them moving through the approach and bring the arm swing with that, so to speak. Now we're not saying completely start the lower body, then eventually start the upper body, 
you want to try to initiate with the hips, with the knees, with the footwork, and get them started into the approach, typically more so than just trying to swing the ball out and catch up to it with the lower body. The lower body is going to be our foundation. It's really where we get a lot of our power and generate most of our speed. So as a whole, consider the different parts of where you start and how fast you start, perhaps um, which direction you're going to align those start positions and make everything as consistent as you can from shot to shot. Eventually, it'll get easier and easier to repeat, accuracy should improve, and eventually you'll wind up with higher scores.